I let Charlie drive me out of this house, I reward his bad behavior. Yeah, it's only supposed to happen in show business, which we are not in. Not anymore. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm Veen Fuso, and last month I made a video titled, The Day Two and a Half Men Died. But I intentionally left out the series finale, and that's because I have a lot of thoughts on the series final episode, and the video is already running long. So today, as promised, join me in taking a look back at the final episode, or actually technically episodes, of Two and a Half Men. The two-part series finale of Two and a Half Men is widely regarded as one of the worst series finales of all time. And that's no hyperbole. In looking up the worst endings to shows, Two and a Half Men always makes the list. Always. Literally the top five to six Google results all include it. And then in looking up the worst episodes of Two and a Half Men, the finale not only makes the list, but it's very often number one on that list. It's real easy to see that these episodes aren't typically looked back on with fondness. And you're about to find out why. The last two episodes of Two and a Half Men work as a two-parter entitled Of Course He's Dead. Obviously alluding to the character of Charlie Harper, who had died in canon four years prior. As you could probably imagine, when the title of that episode was released to the public, the public ate that shit up and people began to openly fantasize about what that meant for the show. Suddenly, everybody who had any tie to the show was being questioned. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Charlie expressed strong interest in returning during the final season. Charlie Sheen has been out there saying he wants to come back uh, for like the final episode. A big Charlie return would be a minor miracle. Will he or won't he? And, and there's one big question. You know uh -huh. that everybody oh, yeah. has. Will Charlie Sheen return for the final episode? Many are wondering whether Charlie Sheen will show up in the finale. There's been all these rumors about you going on the finale. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. true? Is that something you would ever consider? I would definitely do it, yeah. It seems that there's a lot of hope for those hoping Sheen will return to Two and a Half Men for a final appearance. Does Just Charlie come back? Is Charlie Sheen gonna pop up? That's a good question that you have. Yeah, if that's if they if they'll have me, I will. Uh, I will. I will be there. Everybody in the free world wants to know: Will Charlie <laughs> Sheen show up? It looks like there's a good chance Sheen will make an appearance in the Two and a Half Men series finale. I'm but, scared. Really? Yeah, I'm a little terrified. They know that I'll that I want to do it, and and I know that they're open to it. So, I guess we're just a meeting away from. Uh, for making it, wow. making it happen, yeah. If you're working on the Warner Brothers lot, uh -huh. if their sirens, <laughs> okay. come save me. Okay. I was just, I was wanting to be a part of the final episode. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just waiting for them. So Charlie comes back. I don't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. It, Did I say that? Do you see um, him returning? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, the, the amount, the amount of bridges that would have to be repaired to do that, I don't know if they're, if they're reparable. So would he return? Was Charlie coming back? Well, uh, kinda, but we'll get to that later. The episode opens up with Rose in her home, delivering a sandwich with vodka down a well. She then tosses down a familiar bowler shirt with some cargo shorts. And there you go. All your questions are answered. Charlie is actually alive and well. Well, I mean... I guess as well as anybody could be trapped at the bottom of a well. Well, anyway, back at the beach house, a royalty check for Charlie for two and a half million dollars comes in the mail. Alan, of course, being Alan, looks to claim the money for his own. And these two opening scenes pretty much set up the thinly veiled plot for these episodes. Charlie is still alive four years later, and after being held captive for four years, is out for revenge. On pretty much everyone. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Alan is looking to cash Charlie's unclaimed checks. As the premise. As the whole thing. And at least half of that sounds interesting. 
but that's not the half we get to see most often. We're not shown a frantic and maddened Charlie making his way back home. We're focused on Alan trying to cash a check and Walden just being there out of necessity. And the way it's formatted is just a prolonged buildup and then a really quick climax. And in any context of what I just said, does that really sound satisfying to anybody? Throughout the back-to-back -back episodes, we're given a litany of returning side characters. Of course, we see Berta, we see Evelyn, we see Judith, and surprisingly, Jake. Wow, it was so nice of him to get off his high horse long enough to make his way down to set. I just want to know, what changed? You were holier than thou, you were too pure for the filth that the show put out. Your words, not mine. But you still come back after your contract was up to pick up a paycheck and leave. Did the good man upstairs give you the go-ahead? Was, was he giving you the buddy Christ the thumbs up? I mean, you showed up to work for what you literally in your own words called the enemy. Is Jesus just cool with that now? You could have ties to Satan and you still be alright? I'm, I'm just, hey, look, I'm, I'm not religious myself. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. Anyway, aside from the obvious cameos, we also see Candy, Bridget, Zoe, and Jenny. Oh, hey, all those people still exist, huh? Alright. Though very surprisingly, we don't get any Herb. And that's really unfortunate. Herb is really an overlooked gem in this show. You couldn't even give my man a cameo? Whose line is it anyway didn't even come back yet? He had time. He could have been there. An even weirder and more noticeable absence is Lewis. He gets a mention once or twice, but he doesn't make an appearance. Where was he the whole time? He lives in that beach house with you, where a good portion of the episode is taking place. How did he not play a part in this episode? You spent this whole season building up the dynamic between him and the two series leads. Alan and Walden got married just so they could adopt him, and like that, poof, he's gone. Where'd he go? I don't know! I guess I shouldn't be shocked because you did the same thing to Jenny this season too. There's also a couple celebrity guest cameos, and I gotta say, in terms of sitcoms and special appearances, especially given the fact that these are newly introduced characters in the finale of a show, I think these were pretty good additions. Of course, these dead parts 1 and 2 are also riddled with references to the very real, real-life drama that occurred behind the scenes of the show. References to Charlie's meltdown, references to Angus's revelation, references to Ashton Kutcher's career, References to Arnold Schwarzenegger's life, it just, a bunch of them. I personally really enjoy these winks and nods to the audience, but there's legitimately so many of them that it seems like it's the primary focus of the episode. Not even just that, it seems like it's the only reason these episodes were written, so that you could tell a couple inside jokes. 12 years ago, your wife kicked you out. And then you and your dumb son moved in with your brother. Uh, 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 he wasn't dumb at the beginning. Uh, he got dumb later on. Hi, I'm Jake Harper, and this is the Human Volcano. <laughs> what happened? Uh, well, turned out it was funnier. Amazing that you've made so much money with such stupid jokes. <laughs> Rather than let you stay there eight and a half years rent free, even though he claimed that he never liked you. Ah, uh, you're not the only one to point out the illogical. <laughs> what exactly happened to Charlie? Yeah, start from the beginning. You mean from the pilot? He he passed away four years ago. Yes, I I am sorry too. Uh, he's irreplaceable. He didn't think I could go on without him. He, he thought I was more of a, a supporting character in his life. But it turns out I, I was sort of a co-lead. No, I checked everything on Charlie. Yeah, I, I found a crazy rant about a former employer. Chuck, you are no match for this warlock. My power will consume you every losing day, ugly whore. <laughs> and this brother of yours supposedly died in Paris under mysterious circumstances. That wasn't all that mysterious. I mean, he was taking a lot of drugs and pissed off almost everybody. The anniversary of Charlie's death is coming up. Well, I was thinking it might be nice to do something to commemorate it. Like what? Snort coke off a hooker's butt? What the hell? 
Looks like the knife he used to chase you around the house with. <laughs> Charlie Sheen apparently pulled a knife on his dentist. At least that's what he's being investigated for. Yeah, that's it. Buy yourself something nice. Sorry, I shot you. <laughs> I didn't know I was loaded. This guy has some serious rage issues. Is he tried anger management? Look, we all feel frustration. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't work. Uh, oh, yeah, sure, I'll hold. What are you doing? Uh, claiming. <laughs> Duh. Winning. Winning. <laughs> winning. Wow, winning. Um, winning. The only thing I'm addicted to right now is winning. What do you think Charlie will do when he gets out of jail? He'll sober up, apologize to everyone, and then do something even worse. I'm hoping someday he and I can be buddies. <laughs> In case he drops by and guts you all like fish. Why me? He doesn't even know me. Moved into his house and carried on like he never existed. You despicable troll. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if this thing even has speaker, because this is a freaking, you know, built by trolls. Keep that in mind. Phones were built by trolls. Since being called a troll by Charlie Sheen, John Cryer, the other man from Two and a Half Men, has maintained a stern media silence. The fact is, um, I am a troll. I do not think that you are a troll. You thought you could replace my ninja awesomeness, you lame clown? I will deploy my army of assassins to destroy you. I'm an F-18, bro, and I will I will destroy you in the air, and I will I will I will deploy my ordnance uh, to the ground and cover you in tiger's blood. I have a different, you know, I got tiger blood, man. Alan, if you move out and Charlie stays here with Walden, I believe that we can keep this going for another five years. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. You try to drown yourself. But you changed your mind because the water was too cold. And then you got into his house and offered to buy it. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I can't wait for this to be over. Why are you here? You know what? I've been asking myself that since day one. Go over Stamos. Stamos, you're just a handsome guy who got lucky on a sitcom. And then you let him and his son stayed there for four more years, rent free. When you say it like that, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Dear Mr. Harper, we are holding unclaimed music royalties for you in the amount of two and a half million dollars. Two and a half million. <laughs> two and a half million dollars. Huh. And then your dead brother's previously unknown lesbian daughter shows up, and then you let her move in. <laughs> Can't write this stuff, huh? Uh, see you in the gym. Okay. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. And then the two of you get married to each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're not gay. And then you adopted a black child. I tell you, I'm not Charlie Harper. And who are you? My name is Christian Slater. I'm a no rest build up man myself. You're right. And I'm the governor of California. And this is why I'm going to run for governor of the state of California. And the two of you are now divorced, but you're living together. If I leave, the whole thing falls apart. Who's Rose? She used to stalk Charlie, and then he married her. And then she started stalking me. Why? Did you sleep with her? Alan slept with her, too. This is my son's social worker, Miss McMartin. And you're stripping her. Oh, lovely. Don't be rude. Uh, and I stripped her first. That's my mother. Uh, oh, Walden slept with her, too. Uh, you slept with my mom? Hey, after 12 years, everybody slept with everybody. And now the woman who stalked your brother and then married him all of a sudden shows up and she says that he's not dead after all, that she's been keeping him in a dungeon pit. And then he escaped. I would consider wrapping this whole thing up. I mean, this whole thing has been going on way too long. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying that. Mm -hmm. Haters gonna hate. You bet you, 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 you bet you all, folks. This isn't even breaking the fourth wall anymore. This is completely demolishing it. This is removing the fourth wall entirely. Also, if anybody in the comment section could answer this, it'd be a huge help to me. I've always wondered, this animation here, is this, is this supposed to be a reference to Food Fight?
You know, the movie that saw Charlie Sheen in the lead role as a CGI dog detective and serial brand mascot. I'm not making this up. This is this is an actual thing. This is just kind of bothering me because I, I think that's what they were trying to go for. But but I, I can't really I can't really tell or say for sure. And speaking of Charlie, the question on everybody's mind was, will he return? The answer being, well, uh, yeah, kind of. But no. But no, not really. You see, Charlie Harper, the character, did in fact return to the series. Charlie Sheen, the actor, did not. And no, no, this time he wasn't played by Kathy Bates. And being that he's actually alive, what, what does it mean for that story arc? I mean, I, I guess you could say it was all in Alan's head, but then why did Jake also see him too? Well, it did initially seem like Charlie was open to coming back to the show. And the show was open to having Charlie back on set. Ultimately, Chuck Lorre and Charlie Sheen couldn't come to terms. And instead, like the last four seasons of the show, Charlie sat this one out. As explained by the show's last title card, where Chuck Lorre, in the blink of an eye, tries to explain what went wrong. I know a lot of you might be disappointed that you didn't get to see Charlie Sheen in tonight's finale. For the record, he was offered a role. Our idea was to have him walk up to the front door in the last scene, ring the doorbell, then turn, look directly into the camera and go off on a maniacal rant about the dangers of drug abuse. He would then explain that these dangers only applied to average people. That he was far from average. He was an angel warrior from Mars. He was invincible. And then we would drop a piano on him. We thought it was funny. He didn't. Instead he wanted us to write a heartwarming scene that would set up his return to primetime TV in a new sitcom called The Harpers starring him and John Cryer. We thought that was funny too. And for the record, I think both of those ideas sound awful. So yeah, Charlie Sheen didn't return to the show. And everyone, myself included, was terribly disappointed. It's obvious that Sheen wanted a new vehicle, but it seemed like everyone else was long done with that road trip. Now, after all that I've said, and all that I've shown, this may surprise you, but I actually don't hate the series finale. Or, well, at least not entirely. Let me explain. I have very, very, very mixed feelings on all of this. I both love and hate this episode, or these episodes. It, it's really, it's a two-parter, but, but also a lot of people just group it together, and then when I purchased it off YouTube... It was just one episode, but it still says parts one and two. It's confusing. I both love and hate these episodes. I love this two-parter as an act of creative venting. I like this as an expression of Chuck Lorre's pent-up frustration. From having worked on this show for 12 years and spent the last five or six of them watching it fall apart. Like I said before, I enjoy the references here. And the episode was one of the more entertaining episodes in the last three or four seasons. It's a fun watch, and I could sit down and watch it multiple times. And I know this because I had to before making this video. It's a funny episode. It got a couple smirks out of me. So I do enjoy it, personally. However, as a finale to a decade-plus-long series, this is atrocious. First off... They overlook and completely disregard several plots to put this together. Lewis? Never heard of him. Lindsay and Alan getting married? Who cares? Also, this is the series finale, yet there's no finality to it. When shows end, they typically try to give you an idea of where the characters go from here. If they haven't completed the journey, they at least give them a direction to head off in. There is none of that here. Nothing changes. Alan's still living with Walden. Walden doesn't have any real long-term romantic prospects. Berta's still Berta. Jake's still away, but Jake's still Jake. There's nothing to this episode that lets you know where these characters are gonna go. There's no grand change for anybody here. Everything just pretty much stays the same. And that is a pretty crappy way of ending your show. But I think the worst thing about all of this is is that Chuck Lorre wasted a send-off to his 12-year-old hit series on trying to stick it to Charlie Sheen. Four years after the character departed, Chuck resurrected him just to kill him off once again. 
Charlie went around telling people the show revolved around him. He's the one that made it work. And Chuck, you fucking proved him right. You revolved your entire last two episodes around a retcon and a possible return of the character. You proved that in some form or fashion you were dependent on him. The show struggled to find an identity without him. Which is why the last episode barely gives Ashton Kutcher anything to do while focusing entirely on Charlie, despite him actually not taking part in the episode. It centered entirely around him. You talk about winning, but Chuck, check the scoreboard. You just made the victory for the opposing team. The whole thing doesn't even seem canonical. It's almost like a what-if scenario or a DVD bonus feature. It doesn't fit in with the rest of the series. I'm supposed to believe Charlie didn't die, he was kept captive for four years by Rose, Rose, who was also pursuing Walden for some reason, then Charlie somehow got out of the dungeon and is now seeking revenge on his mother, brother, and some guy that he never really met or knew. Meanwhile, he's also randomly decided to donate his millions to Jake, a bunch of ex-girlfriends who came to his funeral only to spit on his corpse, his illegitimate daughter who he didn't care enough to be a part of her life or even tell any of his family that she existed. Then he arrives at the beach house and has a piano dropped on him. And then Chuck Lorre's there in a director chair, and then he gets hit with a piano. Like, w what am I even saying? I think people would like this episode a lot better had it not been the send-off to a show that a lot of people once loved. But hey, I guess it's like Chuck said. Why go out with dignity? We never had any. Why start now? <laughs> also, if anyone's interested, it just so happens that Charlie's diva antics wouldn't end here. He went on to star in another sitcom, which similarly had behind the scenes issues and also ended with one of its leads needing to leave the show. So contributing Vgenerates, if you'd want to take a look back at anger management, let me know in the comment section below. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alex Jones and we are breaking the conditioning. Now look, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm kind of retarded, which is why I liked and subscribed to the Social Injustice Warriors channel. I even clicked that little bell to stay notified. You have to look into it, people. But then I began to uncover what I believe to be a secret nefarious plot orchestrated by Zionist reptilians. Now give me a second, digging deep, I discovered that he wants you to quote unquote follow him on Twitter. Now think about that for a minute. What kind of person, what sort of individual wants you to follow them? You know who else wanted people to follow them? The world's biggest Beach Boy fan, Charles Manson. <sighs> Those who want to show their support donate to the guy's Patreon for exclusive content. Now why is it so exclusive? What's this guy hiding from the public? What do those Patreons see that the people of YouTube don't? Then I noticed, he also has a PayPal, and just for the low price of $22 plus shipping, you can get yourself a SIJW t-shirt, Social Injustice Warrior. <sighs> so let's put this all together. He wants people to follow him, he calls you VTards, he wants you all to donate your money to him, and he wants all of you to wear the same clothing. So that just leads to ask, what kind of a hive-like cult is this man operating? V-Infuso, <sighs> the social injustice warrior. <sighs>